here today in Cypress Grove Park to give you an update on our recovery from Hurricane Irma. At this time, I'd like to introduce Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs. Mayor? Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm here joined by the District Commissioner, Pete Clark. And first and foremost, I just want to urge everyone to continue to stay safe as they go through their cleanup activities. It's already getting pretty hot out there, so please remember, drink plenty of fluids. Be safe if you're using ladders, power tools, um, dealing with debris removal. And and I'm going to have to say this again. I don't and, until I don't get any more calls at fire rescue for um, rescue activities associated with carbon monoxide poisoning. We need to reiterate: if you or a loved one or a friend is using a generator, it has to be stored outside of your house, very uh, a very good distance away from any interior surfaces. Please don't keep your generator in your garage, in your home. I want to talk for a minute about the activities that we've got going on. I know most citizens are either um, waiting to get power on that, that's coming along or they're in the process of removing debris from their properties. On Wednesday, September 13th, yesterday, 2017, Orange County opened 10 free citizen drop-off sites. We're here at one at Cypress Grove Park. Those drop-off sites are located on our website at ocfl.net, so you can go there to find the location. If you don't have access to the net, you can call 311 for the location nearest to you. Now, as far as what you can bring to the drop-off sites or have already um, put together for curbside pickup, I want to be clear about this. What we have back here is for vegetative debris. This is for tree limbs, for branches, for um, large uh, objects that are vegetative. This is not for um, household items. This is not for shingles and, um, and other things. Only natural vegetative items are able to be dropped off here. We're also asking, please do not bag those up. I know it's convenient and easier to put them in bags, but if you see behind us, we have some people that came yesterday dropping things off in black bags. We cannot present those um, for collection from Orange County until we open all of those bags to confirm that the items in them are in fact vegetative waste and not other types of waste. So please bring your items, drop them off so we can see what's here. This is free to the public. There, we are not um, helping with the, the unloading, but we do have monitors here to make sure that what you're bringing qualifies. We get reimbursed by the federal government, but we have to follow some very strict guidelines. As far as debris pickup, for those of you who would prefer to just keep your debris on your property until we can get by, we will be making those rounds. However, due to the large volume of yard debris throughout the county, it will take us some time, so please be patient. We have a very coordinated effort with three different large vendors that will be coming around the county to pick up all the storm debris that you place by your curb. Please do not place any of that storm debris out into the street. Again, we're talking about tree limbs, branches, trunks of trees, the things like that that you have no doubt collected. Keep them close to your curb but not in the street and we will be making the rounds. Here are a few other important tips to remember. We cannot pick up mixed debris. So if you have shingles or um, awnings or other things that have come off your house, do not commingle those with your vegetative waste. Keep them separate. As far as household garbage, don't mix that either with your storm debris. We will and we have um, resumed our normal yard waste and um, garbage pickup. So for the smaller items that you can uh, put out the curb like you usually do, continue that. Uh, we're here primarily talking about those large items. One last comment I want to make. If you are living in a gated community or a community that has private roads and private infrastructure, the federal government has mandated that we go about the collection slightly different. We've made some modifications. I think it's going to work very seamlessly. As long as all of you who live in a gated community, if you're a property management company for a gated community, if you're on the Homeowners Association board for one of our many um, wonderful gated communities, if you will either go to our website, ocfl.net, for specific instructions for how we will pick up your debris, or call 311 for a pickup schedule, we'll work with you, but we have to work with you slightly different because of rules in place by the federal government. With that, I'd be pleased to take any questions that you might have at this time. Mayor, the curbside pickup uh, for residents. Has that process begun? 
It has begun. As I said, we have three separate vendors. We don't have a schedule of how long it's going to take to, to make the first pass through our, all of Orange County's neighborhoods and streets. After we've been able to, to gauge, um, probably by the end of Friday, we'll be able to gauge the amount of um, debris to pick up will have a better idea of how long that will take. It will take us some time. We know this from, from Hurricane Charlie. We ask for everybody's patience. Um, I know how difficult this process was in 2004, and we know that this storm was much more widespread. Any other questions that you have? So what yes. Do you think, uh, is your biggest problem right now in Orange Well, um, I, I will tell you, I, always the number one priority for us is, is life and safety. And certainly the concerns that we had about generator activity continues to be a, a top priority that that message get out until everybody um, is able to shut off their generators. We're concerned about our nursing homes. Um, we're concerned about our assisted living facilities in this community. The large ones that everybody knows of and the smaller ones um, that are less well known. We have a, uh, an all out effort right now to reach out to everyone one of them um, to touch uh, every door and to make sure that the people that are in those homes uh, either have um, have uh, electricity or are being uh, located where they can get the safety, uh, life safety needs that they ne they have served. So that's a major concern. After what we saw happening in South Florida, um, we're keenly aware of just how dangerous that can be. And Mayor, uh, you said Friday, tomorrow you may have a little bit better idea as far as how long it's going to take for all of this to be taken up. But do, will, do you have a schedule as far as someone says, well, are you going to come to my area in Florida Park or Colonial Town South? We, uh, in terms of a schedule where I can say it's this date and this time, no. Here's what we will have. We will have um, a, pa a plan for the rotation schedule. So what you'll be able to look at, and I say by the end of the day tomorrow because it'll give us a little bit better gauge of how much we're collecting and how fast we're moving. So we'll have a path, and we'll be able to tell you which communities we're coming to next. So you'll be able to see, geez, uh, you know, I'm right after this community. This is the path. It's a little bit of, uh, for me, it gives me a little more assurance that there's methodology and my stuff will be picked up. There's that often that feeling we have, did they forget me? The next neighborhood over here got picked up and I didn't. So we're going to put that out, but I can't give people the date like we normally do with garbage collection. Garbage collection is much more predictable. We've got a lot of um, good data on that. We know we can do that on a certain schedule. This is less predictable. We also know from 2004 that after we made our first pass, stuff showed up again. We made our second pass. More stuff showed up. We made our third pass. So it's, it's impossible for me to tell you how long it'll take because it's impossible to predict how much um, more material is going to be generated over the coming days. Uh, this, uh, Mark Macero, Public Works Director, you want to talk about where all this debris is going, right after we open all the black bags that um, improperly got dumped <laughs> here <true>. yesterday. <laughs> and we're checking bags. Somebody brought some bags in right now, but they're making them to um, open them up in front of the inspectors right now. This debris will be picked up by the debris contractor and processed, reduced to basically chips, and then he'll dispose of it at his discretion where in place. But this will be picked up. Uh, we've already had some sites where they made some initial up in the northwest part of the county already this morning. And they'll come periodically and clean this up and move it on. Let me also mention, we're just joined by Jim Becker, uh, manager of Solid Waste. Um, that sounds like a better title than garbage manager. So, uh, Jim, if you've got anything you want to add about just the the general um, uh, Orange County uh, garbage collection. Sure. Um, we're working with uh, Public Works and our contractors, our debris pickup contractors. Uh, it's important for people to keep the debris they put out separated so that you have vegetative waste separate from C and D material separate C &D from fencing. C and D equals? Construction and demolition debris, I'm sorry. And, and fencing. Fences, shingles, white, those types of yeah, things. Yeah, white goods, those types of things. Keep those separate so that those guys can pick them up and get them to the right place to dispose of them. Your garbage service continues. Uh, of course, your kitchen garbage is the most important to get rid of, and that's being picked up on schedule. Our contractors that are picking up, our residential contractors that are picking up regular garbage are a little behind with yard waste because of the volumes that are out there, but they will get to you. That might be the day after uh, you were scheduled, which would be the day after the day after now because we're a little late on this week. Next week it should go back to the regular schedule, 
and our contractors, our residential contractors, will be out picking up along with those debris collection guys. We're going to get the county cleaned up as quickly as we can. we got great crews out there to do it. Other questions? Yeah, have you set any guidelines um, to cover previous mistakes by the state to make sure that you get properly reimbursed by FEMA? Oh my gosh, yes. We've set up, we learned a lot in 2004. Um, in fact, part of the reason that we are uh, addressing gated communities a little different was from some of the things that we learned. So a big part of this um, process is us making sure that we follow all those guidelines. And it's important to our citizens because what we don't want to do is saddle our citizens with um, extra costs that come out of their tax dollars when the federal government has agreed to pay for it. We, we just want to make sure our citizens are getting their share, fair share, and that's why we need their cooperation. I do want to say this. The overwhelming majority of the citizens have been extremely helpful and extremely patient, um, and I know that the next week, two weeks, is going to require a lot more patience when it comes to storm water or uh, storm debris pickup. I, I know that. I'm just preparing everybody in advance. It will take us a little time. Can you speak to that, Jim, or, um, it, you know, from last time around, and this is more than last time. Yeah, it's difficult to determine. We're, we're looking at over a million cubic yards of material, and if you figure that a truck usually carries 20 to 30 cubic yards, that's a lot of truck, tri uh, truck trips. So it's going to be expensive, but I, I couldn't put a price on it now. It's just too, too big to really figure out at this point. Um, uh, talking to our contractors, or we're, we're working on a schedule right now. Actually, we're working on a schedule with the contractors, and that will be published accordingly. But we're still we're in that phase of working with contractors and coming up with a when. And, and our understanding is they're going to do a full sweep of the entire county, and they should have that done in four weeks. So the whole county will get one sweep of service, and then they're going to do some other sweeps because some people won't have their material out. So they're dedicated to doing it, and everybody should see debris, debris picked up no later than four weeks from now. Okay. Mayor, yeah. Oh, I wish I could give you the count. I'm sorry. I, I don't have that count in front of me. And we have, as I mentioned, we have large nursing homes that I think people uh, know about. And then we have a lot of uh, homes where uh, the facilities are operated out of people's homes. There might be four, six, eight people um, in those homes. And we're, we're equally concerned about all of them, obviously. And we have a, a plan in place to visit each and every one of them. Thank you. All right. We appreciate your, your continued support. Um, from our, our local media have been extremely helpful to getting the safety messages out to our community. God bless. Did you want to mention the federal declaration and the individual? Oh, yes, I'm sure. Yeah. That, absolutely, Commissioner. Commissioner Clark just reminded me, um, and this is a, uh, an important notice for our public. We've worked um, diligently with the federal government and the state government. On Sunday, before the storm even uh, hit full force, we were in the process of filling out a preliminary application so that our citizens and residents who are impacted um, financially, uh, you've seen some of the pictures of homes underwater and boats and cars underwater. We want to make sure that the federal government um, is recognizing their losses and helping to compensate them as well. So we filed an initial application on Sunday. Uh, Tuesday, with the help of the property appraiser, we were able to submit to the state, who then forwarded to the, gov to the federal government, um, an, as an initial assessment of our damages. I think it was probably on the low side. And uh, Wednesday morning, I think we were the first uh, Central Florida community that was added into the list of uh, communities and counties in the state of Florida that are eligible to receive assistance for our citizens, our residents, homeowners um, that own property that has been damaged. So we're very happy about that. We'll be putting out information on our website. Commissioners will be um, distributing information to each of their districts about how you can uh, seek to apply for assistance through the federal government. Again, this is a federal program. It's not a local program, um, but we're very pleased that Orange County was put on the list early yesterday morning uh, with the prompt action of our emergency management officer and the property appraiser. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes our briefing for this afternoon.